the whole Tibetan plateau is very special indeed because it's the, the, the highest and the biggest plateau in the world and it was formed because of the Indian-Asian collision, so about 55 million years ago. And because of the collision, it formed all these very, very large active faults that we are studying now. But there are still many things we don't know. I think every geologist in the world is hoping that one day we can kind of have some signs that we can predict earthquakes. So my name is Marilus Chevalier, or Ma Xiaoli in Chinese, and uh, I've been in Beijing in China for 14 years. I arrived in 2010 to work at the Institute of Geology of the Chinese Academy of Geological Sciences. My research is about the Tibetan Plateau on active tectonics, large active faults and big earthquakes. 3,150. Here we have a schist, yes. Yeah. So no, this is just soil. Maybe there. The Shenshen River leaves the fault trace and suddenly goes south toward Yajiang at a 90 degree angle. So we're at the easternmost large offset of the Shenshen River, 62 kilometers from where it hits the fault, follows the fault for 62 kilometers, and then leaves the fault. Delfu County in Sichuan Province is an important commercial hub in the Shizong region and a key starting point of the ancient Tea Horse Road. On the outskirts of this city lies the dangerous Xianshui He Fault Zone, which cuts across the river. For over two years, a team of geologists from China and Belgium has focused their earthquake research on this fault zone. In October 2024, the scientific expedition team arrived in Daofu County. Oh, limestone. This limestone fell from this scarp behind the trees. This is not a place. So uh, yeah, it's very important to study this fault and also because it's quite populated compared to other active faults on the Tibetan Plateau. It's one of the largest faults in China and it's 1400 kilometers long. It goes from Yushu, Batang, all the way to Kunming. In, in the Daofu Basin and uh, near the Shenzhou Fault, um, we found so many landslides that are still active. So we want to understand the structure at depth to see the influence of landslides on the Shenzhou River and the, the relationship with the active fault, the Shenzhou Fault. When I see all the landslides here, around there have been also more recent earthquakes in 1981 there was an earthquake not far from magnitude 7 there was there's probably information about damage in the city but about landslides nothing like here we have Hito village it is in august 2019 and then four months later all this collapsed and here the road starts moving and two years later, the road could even not be used anymore. And now this road is here, much, much at a lower scale. And now you cannot almost not drive there anymore with the car. One of the team's destinations is Etor village, home to just seven households. 
Although far from Daofu's urban center, this seemingly tranquil village hides looming dangers. So now we're going on top of that big landslide, which is still active now. Like they're rebuilding the road, they're trying to stabilize the slope, and we're going to the top to see yeah, where it starts and the types of rock. It looks like it's limestone or, um, or maybe schist. Yeah, it's uh, at the bottom, it looks like it's both. Do you see? I can break the rock. I'm so strong. I can break the rock by hand. <laughs> uh, this is schist. So schist is like, it's like um, like the dessert with all the layers, you know. So the rock is made uh, it's made of all these different layers. And you have some mica inside. So yeah, very very soft. quite easily so they're just falling down with the landslide the slowly creeping landslide and you can see that it stopped where the cars are uh, I've been working more than 26 years uh, for example on geohazards in Central Asia in uh, Central Asia most of the biggest earthquake above magnitude 7 were before 1950. There was also a more recent one, 1992 uh, Susamir earthquake, northern Kyrgyzstan, but did not create uh, as many landslides. So here you have more information before and after. <laughs> now we're on the crest that is stable where the houses are they're stable for now and on this side is another big landslide this one goes to the Xianxue River we still don't quite understand why this particular area of the Central Fault has so many landslides. How can the risks of these landslides be minimized? Chevalier and her team continue to research on the Xianxue He Fault Zone to find answers to these questions. As midday approached, Chevalier and her team prepared a simple packed lunch. Okay, so Hans, tell me, how, how did you become a geologist? Why did you choose geology? Well, when I was a child, I was collecting fossils and, and minerals. My, my daughter, for example, is doing the same. My two, two sons not. My daughter is doing the same. So well, I transferred this interest to my daughter. <laughs>我希望可以跟马老师好好学习对于我童年没有得到答案的那些节目的疑问希望可以有进一步的了解可以拓宽一下人类知识的边界是我小时候是在也是在这种小山村子里面所以每天就爬山就是亲近大自然我就学得了地
During her 14 years working in China, Chevalier has frequently conducted fieldwork on the Qinghai Shitsang Plateau, with Chengdu serving as a key logistics hub. Our institute has a base in Chengdu in Pixian. Our team has been doing some drilling in the fault to study the fault rocks, um, to see the dip of the fault. Okay, this one is not too broken. And all the samples we collect, we leave them in Chengdu. So all of the equipment to analyze the rocks are in Chengdu now. Okay, so this is the, um, the core from about 530 meters deep in the Sianchure Fault. So we have three drilling uh, holes in the Sianchure Fault. So we want to find where the fault is. And then we look at this one, for example, this one is below the fault. And you can see that there is not deformed, it's still white. It's not broken, so it's below the fault. The fault is somewhere here. And the closer you get to the fault, and the more broken the rock is, the more black it is because it's deformed by the, by the earthquake action. So, good morning. I will uh, present As early as 1980, the Institute of Geology, Chinese Academy of Geological Sciences, collaborated with France on scientific research. Chevalier played a crucial role in Sino-French cooperation, fostering joint studies on fault activity and natural disasters on the Qinghai Shitsang Plateau. Her work has provided vital data for China's earthquake hazard assessments. Since 2010, Chevalier has lived and worked in Beijing for 14 years. In 2012, she met her husband from Singapore, and they held their wedding four years later. Their daughter was born in Beijing. <laughs> you know, I mean, she has a home in Belgium, she has a home in Singapore, my husband's from Singapore, but uh, she really thinks that she's Chinese. You know, she speaks perfect Chinese, like, Beijing Hutong Chinese. <laughs> and you got me. Chevalier has rooted both her family and career in China. Over the past two decades, she has published two first author papers in the publication Science, as well as over 60 academic papers. She has also actively promoted international collaborations between China and multiple research teams from Europe and America. Her achievements earned her the Chinese Government Friendship Award in 2021. Yeah, we lived up there for six years in the Hutong. Ah, attention, reste bien droit, il y a quelqu'un derrière, bouge pas. Well, Beijing is like my home, right? <laughs> my new home, my second home. We, we liked living in the hutongs because it's like every day we would pass through the little hutongs and say hi to the shafu and hi to the yeye and hi to the nai nai. Yeah, it's very uh, peaceful, very quiet, and then we know all of the neighbors. And then uh, just across from our house before, there is the doge, the famous doge, uh, doge den. <laughs> Hello. 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 In November 2024, 
Chevalier and her team returned to the Qinghai Shizang Plateau to collect more data for earthquake research on the Xianshui He Fault Zone. Yala Snow Mountain stands at 5,884 meters above sea level. To this day, no one has ever successfully peaked it. At different levels of the mountain, there are different landforms like meadows, lakes, glacial ravines, etc. Wow! Chevalier is preparing to climb through a pass of over 4,700 meters above sea level to observe the impact of the ice erosion on the area around Yala Snow Mountain. Amidst the ancient mountains and rivers of the Qinghai Shizang Plateau, Chevalier is gradually realizing her childhood dream. Whether through her geological work or her happy family life, her heart lies in China. Like an eagle soaring in the sky, she listens to the seismic activities of the plateau, witnessing the ever-changing dynamics of the earth. <laughs>